And we are back. Hope you had a good weekend. I know I did because I had one. A one day weekend. Hope you had a two day weekend. It is a beautiful Monday morning, 7th day of October 2024. I am Dan Coons. Beautiful stretch of weather all week long. It, was, it started really on Saturday when the high pressure moved in, although it was a little cool. Yesterday it was beautiful, 70 degrees, gobs of gooey good sunshine. A lot of people out and about on Sunday. I noticed that when I was running my errands on Sunday afternoon. I thought nobody's home watching the Seahawks, which was fine because they lost. Uh, today looks gorgeous. Tomorrow looks gorgeous. Slightly cooler Wednesday, but still beautiful. High pressure, large and in charge. Things are going to start changing a little bit towards the end of the week and into the weekend, but uh, no complaints from here. Forecast you're going to like is on the way. Plus news, whether you like it or not, we got news and we will do exactly that. It's a lot of sports. It's Monday. Of course, you know what happened to the Seahawks yesterday. One of the nice things about being a huge fan of the baseball playoffs, of which I am, uh, you don't have to worry about watching the Seahawks. I just watched baseball yesterday. Do it again today. Highlights from the Bridges Sportsmanship game between the Wildcats and the Panthers, a game that we carried for you on Saturday. We'll have that. Let you know how the Wild did over the weekend. And the big forum is tonight. This is the one that's being put on by the Apple STEM Network in conjunction with the North Central Educational Services District. It's all about how the local candidates running for state office for Olympia, uh, how they, um, what they feel about STEM, what do they know about STEM, the importance of science, technology, engineering, and math. All of the candidates who want to serve this general area, uh, the districts that now make up North Central Washington, they will all be gathered at the NCESD headquarters in Old Station, and they'll have a forum tonight. And Holly, Holly Brigham is the Apple STEM coordinator. She's putting this whole forum together. It's very important. We believe it's important that you be not just a voter, but an informed voter. And they're going to do their part, and we're going to do our part by showing that interview for you in the back half of the program. But two minutes after the hour, our tour begins. It's not officially sunrise yet. Officially, it's at 7.09. But one of the things about this time of the year, even though we're losing daylight, a little over three minutes of daylight, uh, the sunrise takes longer and the sunset takes longer. So you do have that. There's enough obvious of residual light out there that we uh, we can see the valley pretty good. It was 66, by the way. That was the high on Saturday, just about normal. Sunday's high was 70. We're going to be mid 70s today and upper 70s on Tuesday before we start cooling down on Wednesday. Not record breaking, but still plenty warm for most folks. And again, barely a cloud in the sky, if at all. Lake Wenatchee is a popular camera, and why not? It's a beautiful place to be. And there's the low clouds and the fog that forms over Lake Wenatchee pretty much every day this time of the year when the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air directly above the water is differentiated enough that fog forms. And then, of course, it will burn off as the atmosphere warms up. Let's go up to the Chelan Butte and say good morning to Waterville from the very tip top of Chelan Butte. We're looking southeast towards the Waterville Plateau, a stunning view there. Hope the wheat harvest went good. And uh, you can barely make out the Columbia River, but that's up at the very tip top of uh, Chelan Butte. And that's about a mile up in the air, as is Waterville, which is why we can see the Waterville Plateau, even though that camera is high above Lake Chelan. And finally, a beautiful sunrise up in Billy Goat. And we have that turned, I believe, to the southeast as well. If we had that panned over to the left outside of your screen, you would be able to see Pateras and Brewster and uh, the Methow River, but that is pointed down towards uh, the southeast area, basically towards Bridgeport and the Gamble Sands Resort as we see a beautiful sunrise up in the, that area. Real quick, Omac, you're at 37, you're cold. We're at 43 here in the Wenatchee Valley. Your five-day forecast compared to the averages, Wenatchee, by the way, is the lower left-hand corner, so take a look at where you live, and I believe you live in Wenatchee if you're watching this show. Uh, the red is the forecast highs and uh, the forecast lows and the green uh, gob there in the middle is where we should be. So as you can see, the five day forecast temperature forecast compared to what we should see is going to be pretty warm through the middle of the week before we cool back down to about normal for our high temperatures towards the back half of the week. Everybody is going to be warmer than normal all the way through Wednesday before things cool down on Thursday and it's not going to cool down that much. From the National Weather Service, quiet, nothing to talk about. Hope you have the day off because it's about as good as it can get. Not a lot of wind, just a little kick up here and there. We'll top off at 76, beautiful day, 51 for the overnight low tonight. A 78, our forecast high on Tuesday. When's the next time we're going to see 78? We keep waiting for the autumn weather to really arrive and it hasn't. 51 for the overnight low, 
Tuesday night. Wednesday, we cool down just a little bit. Not much, only 71. And then a weak disturbance will start passing through Wednesday night. That's going to cool us down a little bit on Thursday, 67, which is our normal high. This time of the year is right around 65 or 66. So we'll be back down to normal. Maybe a stray raindrop on Friday, just a slight chance of that. Good looking weekend right now, although it's a little far out to really lock in what the forecast may be right now. The National Weather Service says look for another gorgeous weekend heading our way. Saturday and Sunday we have if you like sunny and mild weather you can't ask for a better forecast but we need rain we're going to take a break and when we come back the Monday morning news you're watching Wicked Financial Valley on the NCW Life Channel Enjoy the sounds of summer from your very own pool and spa. Blue Lagoon is now scheduling pool installations for this summer. Call today to schedule a free consultation for a custom San Juan fiberglass pool. And let the experts at Blue Lagoon handle the construction, installation, and regular maintenance. Turn your boring backyard into vacation paradise this summer with industry-leading San Juan pool. No need to go off the deep end. Relax knowing you're in great hands with Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa. The family at the Epladolin want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Epladolin offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Epladolin welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Epladolin, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. Do you hate getting called by Medicare telemarketers? Well, this October, your phone is gonna be ringing off the hook because we will be experiencing a huge Medicare change. Now, for the last 20 years, Springwater Insurance has been helping those of you on Medicare. So just say no to those telemarketers by not answering their ads. Instead, call a local agent like Springwater Insurance who's been helping for 20 years. So give us a call at Springwater. We can meet at one of our five offices or give us a call. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. It's a beautiful morning, 43 degrees, gobs of sunshine for everybody. Enjoy mid-70s today, upper 70s on Tuesday. Slightly cooler, but still lots of sunshine Wednesday and Thursday. Going to be a beautiful week all over. North Central Washington. It's nine minutes after the hour. A man convicted last month of seven felony sex offenses, including rape and assault. Well, he was sentenced Thursday to at least 32 years in prison. Israel Gonzalez Munoz of Eastern H could spend the rest of his life behind bars under the indeterminate sentence handed down by Chelan County Judge Robert Jordan. A jury in September found the 48-year-old Munoz guilty on charges of second-degree rape, second-degree assault, and five counts of voyeurism for sexually assaulting a woman he escorted home from a party back in 2020 and then taking photos of the victim while in the act. He was acquitted on one out of the eight criminal charges. The indeterminate sentence means after Munez serves his 32-year prison term, a state commission will decide whether he is too dangerous to be released. The Douglas County Superior Courtroom is going to be real busy. They're likely to see two murder trials in the next three months. On Thursday, Judge Brian Huber set a December 2nd trial date for Ashton Bunting Jr. He's the East Wenatchee man accused of murdering his partner, Cynthia Ring, and leaving her four-year-old child alone in the same apartment with her body while he fled to Ohio. That happened back in June. He allegedly left notes behind in which he admitted to killing Ring. Bunting has been held in the Chelan County Jail since late July. Earlier this year, 35-year-old Travis Earl Collins of rural Leavenworth. He was arrested by sheriff's deputies in the February 1st murder of Julio Cesar Garcia Ramirez, allegedly over a cocaine transaction gone wrong. Garcia was found shot to death next to his vehicle along Rock Island Road. Huber set Collins' trial date last week for January 6th. He is also in jail on a $2 million bond. 
East Wenatchee police are looking for a man sus uh, suspected of committing lewd conduct in a Wenatchee Valley Mall storefront. The incident was reported last week, Monday, as a matter of fact, after the suspect allegedly exposed himself to an in-store security camera. Other shoppers in the store reported witnessing the act. Police issued these frames that you see there from the security video. They're trying to locate the suspect. Anybody with information about the incident is asked to call the East Wenatchee Police Department through Rivercom. Applesauce and fruit juice company Treetop is one of 35 plastic producers who are being fined by the Washington State Department of Ecology for not complying with the state's recycled content law. Ecology said the plastic producers did not include enough recycled material in trash bags and beverage containers that's covered under the law. Treetop, of course, has a plant here in Wenatchee that produces frozen apple ingredients for the food industry. Treetop was fined a little over $20,000. Minimum recycled content requirements took effect in 2023 and beverage container pr producers had to include 15% recycled content. Other fine companies include Walgreens, Kroger and Albertsons. The fines range from 39 bucks to just over $67,000. The East Wenatchee Police Department's previous K-9 program ended back in 2011. This year, a dedicated officer and a rescue dog brought it back to life. Maverick started working for the police department last month. He's now one of the first of three police dogs in the state that's able to detect fentanyl. Our very own Casey Safford spoke with East Wenatchee Police Chief Rick Johnson and the handler Jordan Connolly about the program's revival and Maverick's training. So for starters, we encourage our people to come to us with ideas, right? I'm big on, hey, bring me solutions, don't bring me problems. Um, and Officer Conley actually um, created a proposal that he brought to myself and the assistant chief, and it had everything in it from uh, onboarding the dog to fundraising to how the program would be sustained. And uh, once he had pitched it to me, I said, okay, let's pitch it to the mayor and council. And uh, he helped me with that. and. We got a really successful result on that. Um, some of it were based on, I guess, assumptions about raising the funds. We budgeted 35000 for the K-9 program for 2024 with the assumption that we'd be able to raise the money and the understanding with the city. And just in eight months, we raised $30,000 all from uh, one, one community grant locally. And then the rest, that was about $8,000. And then the rest from local donation to wow. citizens and businesses. Yeah, so he's, I mean, he's sold to the community as a regional resource because we don't want to raise funds and then he would just be used in East Wenatchee. And it, part of the interagency local cooperation that goes on here in this valley uh, is sharing of resources and tools like that. So he's the other agencies are aware he's working. Um, he did his first weekend this last weekend and he the searches that he did resulted in six different vehicles being searched, five of them off of a search warrant. And what that looks like is um, usually a traffic stop and officers see something that would lead them to believe that there could be narcotics in the vehicle. It could be something that looks like paraphernalia, behaviors that are going on in the vehicle. But five of those vehicles were taken for search warrants. The search warrants are still being processed on those vehicles. But just in the last weekend, uh, he seized over 80 80 fentanyl pills resulted um, in a, as a result of his search warrants. Um, and then three firearms were recovered out of a vehicle that was seized for a narcotic search warrant. Maverick doesn't isn't trained to detect on firearms, but obviously we find other things once officers are in the vehicle for uh, a search warrant related to the narcotics. Um, methamphetamine also located. Um, and like I said, just one weekend. So I, I anticipate it's gonna build. So I understand that he was selected as a rescue dog for this program, and then when you got there, you were partnered with him? Correct, yeah. So after the first week, uh, we, we worked with all the dogs in the program, and they're assigned by personality. So he was assigned based on our drive and our personality and all that. So that's how he got assigned to me at the end of week one. So tell us a bit about what your relationship with Maverick is like now. It's pretty good. You know, I, we're, He's pretty protective of me. Uh, we like to have fun, you know, this is all just a big game to him. Uh, he doesn't know that he's finding drugs, he just likes to get the ball. Uh, so I make it fun for him. All right, so I understand that you and Maverick graduated together from the Narcotic Detection Training Program around September 19th. Can you tell our viewers a bit more about what that training involves and how it's prepared Maverick to serve our local community? Yes, it was six weeks at the Airway Heights Prison. Oh, five weeks there and we did another week of like on the road training at some prisons. Uh, he learned how to search vehicles, uh, luggage, 
parcels, you could say, and buildings, like interior buildings and whatnot. So he's, he's got a lot of repetition to do on that. Uh, imprinted on fentanyl, methamphetamines, cocaine, and heroin. So he's trained to detect all of those? He's trained to alert the odor of those, that's mm -hmm. correct. How does he search cars or areas and what does he do to alert you? Typically with a car, that's, that's what he gets the most exposure on working the street. He'll start with an exterior search. Uh, he searches door seams underneath, anywhere. And then uh, if he sees he alerts on or detects odor, he'll start with a change of behavior. And if he gets close to the odor or the source, or if it's a lot of odor, He'll do a sit response. What precautions are taken to protect Maverick's <clears throat> health as he's searching for drugs since he is working with these opioid substances? Yeah, so like I said, he just sits on the odor, so not necessarily every time he hits on it is he touching his nose directly to fentanyl. However, you know, I haven't been aware of any documented overdoses of dogs, uh, but we do carry Narcan on our person and in the car as well. And me being a handler, I carry extra Narcan with me as well, too, if needed. Good dog! That's a good boy! That's a good boy! And finally on this Monday, Chelan County was awarded three and a half million dollars by the Washington State Salmon Recovery Board for projects that will improve habitat for salmon. The Chelan Douglas Land Trust will get two hundred and five thousand dollars. They're going to buy sixteen and a half acres along the Antiat River and three hundred and sixty thousand dollars to buy thirty four and a half acres near the lower White River for salmon habitat conservation. The county's Natural Resource Department will get $206,000 to complete a preliminary design to reconnect Bashaston Creek to its entire historic channel and $125,000 to assess data gaps related to Clockham Creek. Statewide, the board awarded $50 million for 145 projects. Almost half of that amount was funded through the Climate Commitment Act and targeted for the restoration of riparian areas. And that is the news. On a Monday, it's another week, going to be another busy day in the newsroom, but we got pros who know what they're doing. The news will be gathered, disseminated, written, and then broadcast on, well, this very television station. At 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock tonight, 5, 6, and 10 is the news. If it doesn't fit into your schedule, because we all know you're busy, the news is up and running right around 5 o'clock at your convenience. You can watch our newscast with Grant and Erica on the World Wide Web via our homepage, ncwlife.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube page. We're out there, folks. And if you're out there and you see something that might warrant our attention, send us an email. Love to hear from you. News at ncwlife.com. Sports, and there's a lot of it in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. I'm Jen Mueller. Watch for my show, I Cook You, you Measure on NCW Life. It's part cooking instruction, part entertainment, and all about connecting over food and wine with your favorite Northwest athletes. Watch I Cook You Measure with Jen Mueller Mondays at 1, Wednesdays at 2, Fridays at 11 a.m., and Saturday and Sundays at 10.30 p.m. right here on the NCW Life channel. Hey there, folks. Blueberry Carrie here to invite you on out to experience Blueberry Hills. Of course, the food is fabulous, like our cheese blints, our famous French dip, our legendary Eggs Benedict, and unforgettable burgers. But we're more than just great food. People come from all over the world to experience what's been called one of the best destination restaurants in the Pacific Northwest. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson. It's where the world is coming to. To name yourself after the highest peak in North America, Maybe that's audacity, but towering above is exactly what the first ever all-electric GMC Sierra EV Denali Edition 1 is built to do. With 754 horsepower and up to a GM estimated 400 miles of range, it is the Denali of EVs. The Sierra EV Denali. My name's Nick Dirk, and I've been a cinematographer photographer for over 10 years. I got my start at the Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center. Without the Tech Center, I wouldn't have got my first job in media production three months after I graduated high school. My name is Charlie Voris, and I own Vortex Productions. My work has taken me on exciting adventures all around the world, and I got my start at Wenatchee Valley Tech. Hey, my name is Ole Mingo, and I'm the executive director at Heirloom Creatives in Wenatchee. I am so thankful for Wenatchee Valley Tech to be able to have my dream career.
20 minutes after the hour in sports, Bryce Ford Wheaton returned a blocked Jason Myers field goal 60 yards for a touchdown with 55 seconds left. And that was the clinching score. The Giants beat the Seahawks 29 to 20. Geno Smith, 28 of 40, 284 yards. He rushed for another 72 yards, but he was also sacked seven times, three of them coming from Dexter Lawrence the second. And Coach Mike McDonald said after the game, the Seahawks defense got outplayed. We got we got out we got outplayed and out executed today. That's what happened. Uh, I thought we made some good adjustments as the game went on. I'm not sure what the numbers are saying, but like we you know we didn't get off the, when we did get create uh, third downs in the first half we didn't get off the field, and then I think there you are know, some penalties there in the second half. So it's kind of all the way around, all three phases, all three levels of the defense, uh, myself included. I mean. Um, we get outplayed today on defense. Seahawks have a short week. They host the San Francisco 49ers Thursday night at Lumen Field. By the way, that will be on Amazon Prime and on Q13 Fox, so it will be on television. To the scoreboard we go for the NFC West. One uh, interdivision game. The Cardinals upset the 49ers 24 to 23. And there's the Giants, of course, beating the Seahawks. Packers over the Rams 24 to 19. College football over the weekend. Big victory for the Huskies. In their rematch of the national championship game, they got the better part of the Wolverines at Husky Stadium 27-17. Central rolled over eastern New Mexico 44-28. Well, the Bridge of Sportsmanship Trophy will once again reside in the Eastmont High School Trophy case after the Wildcats pulled away with two fourth-quarter touchdowns and they held off the Panthers 42-24 Saturday night at Lee Bofta Field at the Apple Bowl as Eastmont's ninth straight win in the series. Eric Granstrom had the call right here on the NCW Left Channel. Moved a little bit, but now everybody settles. Hand off to Zelensky around the right side. Got away from one man, got away from two. Squirts between the defenses, takes it into the end zone for the touchdown. Can Under five minutes to go here in the first quarter. Branham's going to keep it. Boy, he's going to take it all the way himself for the touchdown. Beautiful read by Ryan Branham. He'll score. Well, as we come back from the lineups, it's a touchdown for Bodie Yale. Eight and a half minutes left in the first half. Branham throws out the flat. The ball's caught out here. It is a 45-40. Gets away from the tackler. Taking it all the way. Anthony Garcia will go into the end zone. Carry for Cortez. 53 yards for him on the night, and now they'll go to Bodie Yale, and Bodie Yale will take it into the end zone. By Anthony Garcia. The snap is back. Spot down, kick away. It has the distance. Does it have the direction? It does! 40. Zelensky looks over. The linebackers cheating in. They'll hand it off to Rafa Perez, who takes it into the end zone for the touchdown he spots. And take it by the return man at the 7 to the 10 15. Look out, he's got a big room. Ben Cook is going to take it all the way to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Wood Edgy. Branham fakes the handoff, looks left, now wants to throw down over the middle of the ball. Intercepted. It's Bodie Yale, I believe, on the interception for Eastmont. No, excuse me, on the interception. Julian Cortez. It'll be Zelensky keeping it himself. He's got good yardage to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Eastmont. And a second down and 10 for Wenatchee. Branham trying to set up the screen again, and it's intercepted again by Eastmont, and that could seal the deal for the Wildcats here in the bridges. They will fake the handoff. They will hand it to him. It's Austin Zelensky gets it around the corner to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and into the end zone. Yeah, not a bad weekend for the Zelensky brothers. In the meantime, if you watched Friday night, you saw what happened. Royal flexed their muscles as a state 1A powerhouse that they are. They crushed Kashmir 55-14. to It was one of the most anticipated games of the season. Didn't turn out that way. The host of Bulldogs hung on for a quarter against the Knights. They traded touchdown for touchdown in the early going. And then Lance Allred took over from there. He had four touchdown runs on the night. He also was 17 and 21 passing for 320 yards and four touchdowns there. He ran 14 times for 152 yards. 
Royal dominating Cashmere. Other scores from the South Central Athletic Conference from over the weekend. Zilla over Keona Benton. It was Connell wiping out Natchez Valley. A lot of blowouts. As a matter of fact, they were all blowouts except Granger and Waluke. That was a little tighter with Granger on top. Caribou Trail League football. Over the weekend, Okanagan crushed Chelan 57-7. Of course, they're the defending state champions. Omak over Brewster 54-21. Cascade nipped Tenasket non-league action 28-14. CWAC over the weekend. Your winners, Prosser shut out Quincy. It was Davis in a non-leaguer over Freda. Sela got by Toppenish. Othello over East Valley. Ellensburg nipped Grandview. Central Washington B, 2B. On Friday night, just one game. Manson beat Lake Roosevelt 42-28. And in 1B action, just a couple of games. Thursday, Soap Lake crushed Pateras. On Friday, Annie had rolled over Oroville. Waterville Mansfield took care of Bridgeport on Friday night. Prep soccer scoreboard. The Wenatchee Panthers rolling right along, undefeated in league. They beat Sunnyside 3 to nothing. Moses Lake got by Eastmont on a penalty kick. Davis defeated West Valley. Highline over Eisenhower in a non-leaguer. In the CWAC, your winners in soccer, it was Quincy, Ellensburg, Freda, Sela, and East Valley. Also in prep soccer from the smaller schools, Cashmere has only lost one game all year, and that was their first match. They've got rolled ever since then. They beat College Place in soccer. 10 to nothing. Tenasca 3, Colville 1, and Davenport over Lake Roosevelt 4 0. Prep volleyball. Cashmere playing well there, too. They swept College Place. In fact, sweeps across the board. With Cashmere sweeping College Place, Chelan sweeping Meridian, Chelan sweeping Noosack Valley, OMAC over Medical Lake. And then they had a tournament, and so there was more Noosack Valley. They played a lot. Other scores Lakeside of Nine Mile Falls shut out Brewster. Again, there's Nooksack Valley over Okanagan. Meridian got by Okanagan. Waterville Mansfield over Soap Lake. Thorpe over Antiat. Moses Lake Christian over Oroville. The Wenatchee Wild managed just one goal over the weekend, just one. They lost three to nothing to Victoria on Saturday, and then they dropped a two to one decision to the Kamloops Blazers yesterday at the Town Toyota Center. Miles Cooper, the lone goal scorer yesterday. Austin Drade had the call on the Wenatchee Wild Hockey Network. Cabbed for it with Feist on the right half wall, and a pass out high. Anderlini with a wrist shot along the ice, save made right out in front. And they toss it in and score. The puck got loose with Bame in the bottom of the right wing faceoff circle. And Bame with the finish. And the Blazers are in front first. A 1 0 advantage. Nathan Bame, far hash mark. Finney curls a pass around a defender. One timer on the way. Keller's save by Hauser. And a great trap underneath that right leg. He throws that right leg out, keeps it out of the net. To the goal line for Friesen, digging for it on the corner wall, holding it up there is Andrew Leaney. Down to 23 seconds left in the second period. Rim back out for Isogai. Near hash mark, looking to the post for Friesen. Back for Isogai. Up top for Andreessen. One timer for the net. They score! Miles Cooper puts the smiles on the wild faces. We're tied at one. Wenatchee with a bunch of chances at the net, and they finally capitalize on the extra one. Miles Cooper, one for the wild. Time of the goal, 19-49 of the second. 39 shots to 27 in favor of the wild. Racing in right wing, Jodry trying to settle it on the snow. Push free with Leighton Feist, brings it ahead two on one. Back checking is Andreessen, wrist shot, Feist scores, and the Blazers. Head into Wenatchee and grab a two to one overtime victory. Wild play back to back games this weekend. They'll be in Victoria against the Royals on Friday and Saturday. Their next home game isn't until October 18th against the Colonial Rockets. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this seventh day of October. If you want to celebrate World Cotton Day, you're more than welcome to do so. It's World Bathtub Day. I can't remember the last time I took a bath. I mean, I shower every day, but I don't take a bath. National Forgiveness and Happiness Day. It's World Architecture Day. It's World Habitat Day. We're all for that, but no, today we celebrate National LED Light Days. The, the, the LED light was invented 62 years ago, but it wasn't until the not, too, not too long ago that the lights began to gain popularity, and the reason was it was expensive as hell. Uh, an LED light bulb used to cost 200 bucks. Now they don't. Fun facts about LED bulbs, about 95% of an LED bulb is recyclable. LEDs, of course, contain no mercury. 
LED lights have been proven to breed fewer bacteria than fluorescent light bulbs when they are used in fresh food displays. If the entire United States replaced half of its incandescent Christmas lights with LED Christmas lights, it would save approximately $17 billion because I hardly use any electricity at all. And LED light bulbs produce less ultraviolet and infrared radiation. That means they attract fewer insects. Get used to it. The LED light is here. Sorry, incandescent fans. Yeah, can't stop progress. It's the bottom of the hour today in history. October 7th, 1916, 108 years ago today, Georgia Tech defeats Cumberland University 222 to nothing. The most lopsided college football game of all time. Cumberland didn't have a football team. They had dropped their football team the previous year, but they had signed a contract to play Georgia Tech, and Georgia Tech wouldn't let them out of the contact. And Cumberland said, we don't even have a team. They said, well, you got to come. So they cobbled together a team and got their butts kicked. They rushed 27 times from minus 47 yards and lost nine fumbles. They should have just wrote a check and stayed home. Georgia Tech 222, Cumberland University 0. 48 years ago today, October 7, 1976, John Lennon, after seven years of fighting the federal government, the immigration services, the attorney general's offices, the State Department, John Lennon finally was awarded his green card, a permanent residency status at a hearing in New York. The government had been trying to deport him for years and years. He couldn't even leave the United States. The State Department told him, if you leave the United States, you're not getting back in. He was stuck here. He got his green card, finally, on October 7th, 1976. Let's go to the races. We're off. It's the ninth race, nice ninth race at Belmont Park in New York. It's October 7th, 1991. And they're off in Cafe Lex and Space Appeal and Scorecard Harry and Banana. Banana is coming up through the bunch. And here comes Doorknob. Doorknob on the left side. And right now it's Space Appeal, Cafe Lex, Scorecard Harry and Beetle Bomb. And it's into the stretch. It's Cafe Lex, Space Appeal, Scorecard Harry, Banana coming up through the bunch. And Beetle Bomb. Doorknob is now dropping off. It's now Scorecard Harry, Space Appeal, and Cafe Lex. And they're going at it. And at the wire, it's Space Appeal, it's Scorecard Harry, it's Cafe Lex. And the the winner is, the winner is, it's, 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 it's the, 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 the winner is, all of them. Yes, a triple dead heat. Scorecard Harry, Space Appeal, and Cafe Lex finish first, first, and first. How the hell they did the payoffs on this is beyond me because the tracks computers couldn't handle it. Because you got your, your exacta, you got the double, you got the triple, you got the winner, the place to show. I don't know, you took a degree in calculus. A triple dead heat at Belmont 33 years ago today. 31 years ago today on a much different note, the most costly and devastating flood in this country's history. The flood of 1993 finally ends after 103 days. The Missouri River falls below flood stage in St. Louis. 100,000 homes destroyed, damages over 20 billion. The Great Flood of 93, which lasted over 100 days. And this one lasted a long time, too. The longest war in this nation's history began on this date in 2001, 23 years ago today, when the war in Afghanistan begins with an air assault and covert operations on the ground. Let's do some birthdays. Historic birthdays. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, al alive as you and me. Said I, but Joe, you're 10 years dead. I never died, said he. Joe Hill, born in Sweden, moved to America, the labor activist and poet. Uh, he was executed by a firing squad in Utah in 1915 for a murder he quite possibly or almost certainly did not commit. Don't mourn, he said, organized. Joe Hill, born in the state in 1879. Well, look who's 72. Yeah, there he is. For the last 24 years, the undisputed leader of Russia. He was the president of Russia from 2000 to 2008. Then he was the prime minister, and now he's been the president. For the last 12 years, Vladimir Putin, he is fluent in Russian, German, Swedish, and English. He speaks perfect English. In fact, he speaks better English than some of our politicians, Vladimir Putin is 72, and Tony Braxton, talent to burn. She is so good. She does it all, too. She's an actress. She's a singer. She's a songwriter, writes her own material. I always have 
extra respect for that. Tony Braxton is 57 years old today. What's going on with your heater and air conditioner? Is this the damnedest thing? In the middle of the day, in the middle of the afternoon, your air conditioner is on, and in the middle of the night, your, AC, your air conditioner goes off and your heater goes on. It could put a lot of stress on your HVAC system. Get ready for the upcoming cold weather. Give Alpine Air a call for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. When Mike Bonatti goes grocery shopping, he prefers to go to the check stands that have checkers. Sometimes it's hard to do. Mike Mandati has got an opinion. And then a very important forum for you people who are interested in science, technology, engineering, and math, and the education of our students because the North Central Educational Services District is hosting a candidates forum tonight at their headquarters. Holly Brigham will give us the details when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Life Channel. It's a great time to go into the medical profession. And this is the perfect place to start because this is going to provide you that basic understanding in order to get into medical school, physical therapy school. So when you are ready to head on your career pathway, wherever it is, then you've already had some experience and say, oh, it's so cool. This is exactly what I want to do. So really, you're going to leave me with 13 college credits and a license with the state of Washington. Highlander Golf Course and Grill, located in East Wenatchee, offers terrific views and challenging play for golfers at every skill level. From the golf course to the grill, you don't need to be a member to dine in style and play golf too. Highlander's well-groomed fairways and greens keep it difficult, yet friendly for your regular rounds of golf or a new destination for you and your out-of-town friends. Contact the Highlander Pro Shop today to schedule your tee time, outing, or tournament. Open seven days a week, where everyone is welcome to play and eat. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect. No matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Downtown Wenatchee, something for everyone. Welcome to Henry Haro, purveyors of modern day provisions. Stop in, meet the team, and shop their curated collections of home, kitchen, and bath goods. Collins Fashions has a sizzling summer sale in progress. Savings throughout the store from special occasion dresses, sundresses, capris, tops, shorts. Collins Fashion staff is here to assist you with your fashion needs Monday through Saturday in downtown Wenatchee. Downtown Wenatchee, it's all here. Apple Valley Honda is bringing the future of driving to you. Introducing the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue EV. Say goodbye to gas stations and hello to a whisper-quiet ride in zero emissions. The wait is over. Finally, a local option for a quality EV from a brand with a track record of exceptional quality and reliability. Experience the Honda Prologue EV for yourself at family-owned Apple Valley Honda. Stay close to home and visit us at Apple Valley Honda today for the life you live. Hello, could I have tickets please? Oh, the Discovery Center is free to visit. So you're telling me we could look at the fish for free? Yep, that's free. But how much is it to drive the steamboat? Todo es gratis. So you're telling me that we could go play on the playground? Still free. It's free. Exactly. Gratis, gratis, gratis. The Discovery Center at Rocky Beach, it's free. It might be sunny now, but fall is in the air, and we've got you covered here on the NCW Life Channel. If it's Wenatchee Panther football, volleyball, or girls soccer, we've got you covered. So tune in to your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel, for Wenatchee Panther sports. Coverage is presented by our platinum supporter, Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Abby's Pizza, Apple Valley Honda, Coldwell Banker Cascade Real Estate, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, and Highlander Golf Course and Grill. This is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I'm in the grocery store one Saturday morning, and I need to use a regular check stand, not the self-check thing. Now, guess what? There's no check stand open. 
does this business not realize that the check stands are where their money comes in and taking my money for their stuff is what they're in business for, isn't it? Well, isn't that the point of their business for them to offer me stuff that I'm willing to give them money for? You know, I, I know there's issues with, with getting enough employees, but there are people who work in these local businesses who've told me that they need more hours, but they and other employees' hours are being cut and they can't get enough. Now, I, I got no problem with a business working to improve their bottom line, but is it getting to the point that some businesses seem to have forgotten that they are dependent on customers like me, customers who have other options? And if it gets to the point where a business priorities tip the scales to where they think they're doing me a favor to take my money, well, uh, there's a little question as to why some businesses go belly up. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Another fall sports season is upon us. Yes, we'll be talking about East Watt football, but also volleyball and girls soccer. Be sure and join us for the East Watt Wildcats all season long right here on the NCW Live Channel, your local TV station. Coverage is presented by Alpine Air Heating and Cooling, Kennedy Real Estate Group, Les Schwab, Sangster Motors, Save Mart, Together for You, and Valley Tractor. You come alive in the dead of winter and start work early on snow days because snowed in is not an option. The Kubota snow lineup of compact tractors, RTVs, and versatile attachments are built to move, plow, blow, and thrive in the winter. So when the snow falls, you can rise to meet it. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 84 months, plus save up to $1,100. When you buy tires at Les Schwab, you're getting more than just tires. You're getting America's best tire warranty, 60-day satisfaction guarantee, no hassle road hazard protection, and free maintenance for the life of your tires. So if something happens to your tire on the road, we'll fix it or we'll replace it. No questions asked. Other places make you pay extra for that kind of protection. But at Les Schwab, it's included with every set of tires because more warranty means less worry. And nobody stands by their tires like Les Schwab. Get more from Les. Welcome to the Gilded Lily home, where something extraordinary is waiting. Fall has arrived at the Gilded Lily. Luscious colors of rust, orange, and gold lead you throughout the entire store. Gourmet foods to delight your guests. Stylish linens, handcrafted jewelry. The Gilded Lily home, where you can step in for inspiration and leave with beautiful items for your home, your kitchen, your lifestyle. When you've been in business for 40 years, it's because you understand change and you put members first, always. Now Works is announcing a change in their membership model. Up to six people on one membership that you can mix and match. The more people, the bigger the discounts. Introducing the Works shared membership model. One membership, friends and family and flexibility. Works, the cleanest, friendliest, most helpful gyms you and your friends will ever join. Welcome back to the program. It's one thing to be a voter. It's another thing to be an informed voter coming up for general election day on November 5th. And our friends at the NCESD, the North Central Educational Services District, is putting together a little candidates forum on October 7th. So you can get to know all the candidates mm -hmm. specifically related to what they do and what she does. Holly is the uh, STEM coordinator. The st that's an important job. Holly, Holly, bring them. Bring them, yeah. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. important, what, what do you do? Well, I mean, what's your, what's your daily, your, you go to the office, your beautiful campus there, yeah. and do what? Yeah, so I get to work with uh, collaborators uh, from across all the sectors. Uh, this is all part of the Apple STEM Network, which is a pretty well-known entity in the Valley. And we pull together K-12 educators, uh, post-secondary educators, and industry folks and employers to really kind of talk through how do we create better pathways um, to meet the goals for the workforce demand that is that is uh, looming in the valley. So we talk a lot about these critical shortages and how we can create better pathways to get our students uh, to 
to fit into these these um, high demand jobs, and so. High demand local jobs because we, we jobs. want them to stay here, contribute yes. to the economy, and become members of the community. Yeah, and we we really want to grow our own, right? We so often see a lot of these, especially STEM and technology jobs, are they are recruiting from outside the area, and we don't see that our students and our um, families have the same kind of opportunity. And a lot of that has to do with post-secondary credential attainment. We know that about 70% of the jobs in the workforce right now demand a post-secondary credential. And we're about, we're hovering about under 30%. Oh, we can do better than that. We can do much better than yeah. that. So that's the work I get to do. I get to go in, get to have conversations with all the people in all these different spaces to try to, to create pathways that are well lit and more accessible for our students and families um, so that they can, they can start fulfilling these really incredible high paying living wage jobs. And I'm assuming you have a pretty good relationship or building good relationships with the larger employers mm -hmm. in our area that need students, who need people coming into the workforce as other people leave the workforce, mm -hmm. who are well versed in science, technology, engineering, and math. Absolutely. So it's, it's not just you guys, it's the employers too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And they inform the work that we do. They let us know, you know, where where the demand is, what the what the job skills are, so that we can then communicate that um, with our K-12 educators and our post-secondary educators so that we're all kind of rowing in the same direction. Yeah. Whose idea was to put this wing dean together on October 7th? <laughs> so this is something that the Apple STEM Network has hosted in the past um, during election years. So this legislative forum is just an opportunity to pull all the candidates into the room and really talk to them about some of these priorities of the Apple STEM Network and some of our educators in the Valley. Yeah. And so you reached out to candidates and mm -hmm. they all pretty much all said yes, according to the press release. They're like all mm -hmm. on board mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on October 7th. It's going to be held at the NCESD mm -hmm. offices out there in Old Station. Mm -hmm. But first things first, we cannot stress this enough, even though it's in one of the larger rooms on the very top floor, the fourth floor, not a lot of room for bodies in there. Right. And when you cram that many bodies in there, it can also get a little uncomfortable. So right. the, the best way to go about doing it, if you want to participate, you can ask questions, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. is to do it virtually. Yeah, we're going to have a virtual option. It's a Zoom webinar, and we will have opportunity uh, for folks to post questions, and they can be either answered live um, or even after the event. So we're going to keep that open uh, for the legislators to continue to engage with anybody who has questions. Um, we are limited right now. I think we're almost full for the in-person, so I really highly recommend um, the webinar, as well as we are going to live stream it on YouTube. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah. The moderators, you brought in some heavy hitters. How did you how did you swing this? Because we have a different moderator for each group of candidates. Talk about that. We do, we do. For District 7, we have um, Dr. Famous Harrison from Wenatchee Valley College. And I used to work at Wenatchee Valley College for many years, so I had a little bit of a connection there to help that out, and he's happy to uh, participate. Then for District 13, we have uh, Dr. Sarah Thompson-Tweedy from Big Bend Community College. And Which makes sense, because that's, that's out in the basin, mm -hmm. District 13 is. Yep. Absolutely. Whereas, you know, and also D District 7 covers parts of Wenatchee and OMAC and that whole expansion. And we have uh, campuses for WVC in both Wenatchee and OMAC. And then finally, Dr. Tracy Adu from Cascade School District is going to be moderating the District 12. The, uh, it, so it's, it's the, these, are, these are smart people. Do they have pretty much carte blanche to ask the candidates any questions that they want to? Are the questions going to be vetted in advance? Out of, how does that work? Yeah, we've created uh, about a dozen questions uh, related to all sorts of different topics that are important for education and STEM, um, and we will we will be providing those questions in advance to the candidates, and the moderators will be assigned uh, questions for specific panelists. This may sound like a, a crazy question, Holly, but how much of this is educating the public so when they vote on November 5th on whatever their issues may be, that they know where the candidates stand as opposed to educating the candidates themselves about science, technology, engineering, and math. I think that the, it's it's a bit of both. I think in the best scenario, in the best case scenario, um, you're you're putting those issues in front of the candidates so that they can really think deeply about those. But it also gives us an opportunity to see, um, you know, what their thought process is about that. Whether they have to research some of these questions and educate themselves um, to really come forward with some remarks about it. Um, yeah, it's it's all it's it's bi-directional. It's a mutually advantageous type of scenario. So. And you don't have to sit through everything if you that can. Canada doesn't live in your district. 
that helps, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let me let me run this through you real quick, folks. Mm -hmm. District seven uh, is going to be from five to five forty-five if that's the district you live in. District thirteen that's from five forty-five to six ten, mm -hmm. and then district twelve is from six ten to seven o'clock. So you can stay and watch the whole thing, or if you're just interested because you can only vote for the person in your district, mm -hmm. you know you're not committing uh, two and a half hours of time, just just like half an hour, forty-five minutes. Right. Absolutely. We we expect people will float in and out depending on their interests and, and where they live. Yeah. And people can ask questions, they can participate. Absolutely. Via the Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. So how do they get on board that? Mm -hmm. So there is an Eventbrite. Um, you can register up front and uh, we have a, a link that you can register and select tickets for that. However, if you want to be part of the live stream on YouTube, you can do that. The live stream doesn't allow the questions, but if you are in the space as part of the Zoom webinar, uh, we will actually be using the Padlet pla pa platform um, to allow folks to, to just post uh, questions based on the district or who they want, or they can pose those questions to all the panelists um, and we'll just run it as a discussion board. You mentioned uh, the 30% mark, which at the start of the interview, which is alarmingly low to me, and I'm not, I'm not an expert, but it, uh, I don't like that number. Mm -hmm. How do we get it up to 65, 70%? How do we, do, what do we do to make that, expedite that? process. Yeah, I think it, it's about everybody coming together. It's about the work that Apple STEM Network does. It's about pulling all the partners and all of the all of the stakeholders into the room, the people who are educating our students and putting them on pathways and really ensuring that it is industry informed um, and that it leads to an industry recognized credential because when we talk about post-secondary attainment, we're not just talking about uh, a college degree. We're talking about internships, apprenticeships, certifications, and so making sure that in our valley, in our region, we are offering all of those opportunities um, that will lead to to job placement. And well, I've talked to to your colleagues, Dr. Sue Kane, Pete mm -hmm. Phillips, and some others there at the NCESD, and they their advice to for students out there. If you have a pretty good idea of what you want to do, go ahead and get going on it. Absolutely. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's one thing to tread water and keep going to school just to keep going to school, which in and of itself is important. Right. But if you know, hey, I, this is what I want to do for a living, right. and you know it, and you're only 17 or 18, you can start. Yeah. I mean, just reach out to the people who do this. Yeah, and half the battle is knowing, right? And so I think that's where some of these events that we put on in the community are really helpful. A lot of our local school districts put on events as well as far as college and career fairs, occupational exploration, and these are great opportunities for students to not only learn about it, but they can sometimes tour facilities and talk to the folks who are doing the jobs and really get a sense of if that fits for them. And so I would say take as, take advantage of as many of those opportunities as you can, because sometimes even just identifying, no, that's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a step yeah. in the right direction, sure. right? So yeah. How do you know you're making an impact, Holly? How do you, how do you know you're, it's, you're doing the job well. Is there, is there a measurable <laughs> something out there you can use? Yeah, absolutely. When we start to see uh, that we're moving the needle on some of that post-secondary credential attainment, for sure. When we start to see more um, uh, structured and clearly lit pathways designed for students. Um, when we are talking to our counterparts in the K-12 or the post-secondary or even the em employer um, sectors and they're, they're telling us and reporting back to us that they're, they're seeing growth and they're seeing change. And when we're at these events and we see the faces of the students light up, um, because they're having that aha moment and they're grabbing a hold of something and feeling passionate about it. That's that's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, when they get that epiphany, like, I get it. Right, yeah. right, yeah, absolutely. I'm 60, I rarely get epiphanies anymore. <laughs> but I also don't know what I want to do for a living. So maybe I should go to this thing and maybe get into the Apple Stand thing. Why not, not why not? <laughs> Holly, it's good to see you. Best of luck on October 7th. Thank you. And again, go to the NCESD website. It's right there on the front mm -hmm. page. I, I found it. Mm -hmm. I can find it, anybody can find it. And it, you click on the thing, you fill out the form, you're, you're good to go if you can either watch the YouTube feed or you can participate via uh, the Zoom call on uh, the seventh day of October. And you can go to the, if you go to the NCESD's website, all the information you need is there so you know when the candidates in your particular district will be uh, fielding questions and all that good stuff. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. I'll let you get back to work. All right, thanks. All right. <laughs> you're watching Wake Up at Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. Flesseno is a small village in Germany, the heritage home to the Bruders family. Today, the Bruders family call Leavenworth home and make award-winning wines that celebrate the American dream. 
New Flesson O Cellars has spectacular views anywhere around the property. So bring your friends to taste award-winning handcrafted wines and seasonal specialties. New Flesson O is perfect for any celebration. From their family to yours, stop by this weekend and experience the charm for yourself. There's no place like home. Because home is where we're totally comfortable. It's where we can be ourselves and let our guards down. It's where we make memories. And we're always imagining new ways to keep it totally comfortable. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. Whether you're building from the ground up or transforming your space with a custom remodel, One Way Construction is your trusted partner in creating a home that's uniquely yours. Your dream home is just a call away. Schedule your free consultation and let's build something amazing together. forecast I want to do a quick shout out to a local business who I, uh, I, I was a patron of yesterday afternoon who uh, I went into this business to to fix something bottom line is I bought a new car August or so and uh, I got my license plates uh, I was had the temporary plate and I got the license plates and it was time to, to put my new I have to put my new license plates on my car and the holes in the back of the car with the plate that you have to put on with your tabs on it there are no holes. The holes have been uh, obliterated, covered up. There's no way to physically attach using the bolts. There was no way to physically attach the license plate, the rear license plate, to my car. It was like, this is a quandary. So I started brainstorming, how am I going to do this? So I went down to a local store. I'm not going to mention the name of the store because I told Stan's and Mary Mart I wouldn't mention it. But I went down to a local store, and Omar and his co-worker took it upon themselves to address this problem that I had, they actually we went actually went out in the parking lot, and I said, "Well, can you believe this?" And they go, well, "This is strange." Well, what do you think? How should I approach attaching this license plate to the back of my car because the holes aren't there anymore? Uh, and uh, Omar and his coworker, I'm sorry, I forgot her name. She was very nice. She gave me a couple of suggestions. And finally, she just said, "Just tape it to the back of your, of your windshield for the time being until you get it fixed." I was so grateful that they took this my little problem, what I was had to work on and they took it upon themselves to try and address the problem. I actually went into stands and bought stuff anyway. I mean, for stuff I probably didn't need. But anyway, shout out to, to the gang. Uh, again, I'm not going to mention the name of the Stans Mary Mart because I told them I wouldn't do that. They're humble people. Uh, as far as the forecast is concerned, you're going to see temperatures above normal for most of this week until we get to Thursday or Friday. Here's your graph. Wenatchee, by the way, is the lower left-hand corner, if you know where you live. We're going to be above normal today. The, the, uh, the, the temperature forecast temperatures the red line for the, our normal highs uh, is the green line and the blue line is our forecast lows so as you can see it's going to be very mild not only for the afternoon highs but the overnight lows well above normal from most of this week until we get into oh you know, say thursday or friday then a bit of a cool down but still very nice weather this is insanely sweet weather and it started really on saturday and it's going to continue from the national weather service here you go. You want sunshine and mild temperatures? You got it, folks. 76 for the afternoon high. We hit 70 yesterday, and it felt warmer than that. Boy, I hope you have the day off today. This is the day to go out and goof off. Clear tonight, 51 for the overnight low. Sunshine Tuesday, warmer still, 78. Very warm for October. Cloudy on Tuesday night. A weak system. A couple of weak disturbances will pass through in the later part of the week. All it's really going to do is cool us down. We're going to see a few more high clouds. Maybe a stray raindrop on Friday, but really no dramatic change. The only thing that's really going to change is the temperatures are going to cool down for a couple of days on Thursday and Friday. And then look at Saturday and Sunday. Right back to sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. The one thing we really need is rain. A lot of it. Ain't none coming. 
Sorry, folks, it's going to be sunny, warm, and dry, but thank you, Mother Nature. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.